Mrs. Mannion, you testified that your husband came home late from his work on the night of the shooting. Were you a little angry about it being late? Well, I, I, I guess I was a little put out. Did you have an argument? Not much. A little. When you left the trailer to go to the inn, did your husband know you were going? He was asleep. Was part of your reason for going without his knowledge because you were uh, vexed? Well, I, I'd been ironing all day, and I... Yes, I guess that's true. Your Honor, the counsel has deliberately cut off my view of the witness. I'm sorry, Mr. Beagler. I, I wouldn't want to interfere with your signals to Mrs. Manning. Well, I object to the implication I was signaling the witness. This is the shabbiest courtroom trick I've ever seen. You haven't lived, Mr. Beagler. Well, Your Honor, I ask the court to rule on my objection. Mr. Dancer, will you be careful not to place yourself between Mr. Beagler and his witness? Oh, of course, Your Honor. Anything else, Mr. Beagler? You do it once more, I'll punch you all the way out into the middle of Lake Superior. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, this rowling has got to stop. The next one of you that speaks out of turn will have me to deal with. Now get on with your cross-examination. Would you have gone to the inn if your husband had uh, been awake? He probably would have gone with me. But would you have gone alone? Not if he didn't want me to. Would he have not wanted you to? I'm not sure. I, I don't know how to answer that. Well, had you ever gone to the Thunder Bay Inn or elsewhere in Thunder Bay alone at night? Yes, sometimes. Did your husband know you were going? Not always. He, he goes to sleep early, and, and sometimes I'm restless. Where did you go on these occasions? Oh, I'd take a walk by the lake or went to the bingo place, maybe to the inn. Did you ever go to meet another man? No, I didn't. I never did that. You mean to say, Mrs. Mannion, a lovely woman like yourself, attractive to men, lonely, restless, that you never once... Objection, Your Honor. Witness has answered the question about other men. Counsel is now making a veiled suggestion to the jury. I withdraw the question. Uh, now, Mrs. Mannion, on these occasional excursions into the night, did you always go and return home alone? Of course. But, Mrs. Mannion, you testified that the reason you got into Barney Quill's car was because you were afraid to go home alone. Why were you so frightened on this particular night? I said that it was because he, he told me bears had been seen around. Was this the first time you'd heard that bears came around Thunder Bay to pick up scraps? No. Had you seen the bears before? Yes. Oh, this was just the first time you were afraid of them? No, I was always afraid of them. Oh, this was just the first time you were enough afraid to allow a, a man to take you home from one of your evening prowls. Objection. Use the word prowls meant to mislead the jury. Sustained. I apologize, Mrs. Mannion. <clears throat> I didn't mean to imply that you were a huntress. Was this the first time that you were enough afraid to allow a man to take you home from one of your evening walks? Well, it, it wasn't just that. It was... Oh, come now, Mrs. Mannion. You should be able to answer that straight off. That's a simple enough question. Your Honor, how can the witness answer straight off and the counsel keeps interrupting the answer? The witness seemed a little slow to me, Mr. Beagler. However, let her complete her answers before you interrupt. Of course, Your Honor. In any case, Mr. Beagler's objection has given Mrs. Mannion sufficient time to think of an answer to my question. You've thought of one, haven't you, Mrs. Mannion? What I was going to say was that I didn't want to offend Mr. Quill by making him think that I was afraid of him or didn't like him. He'd been very pleasant to my husband and me when we'd been in his bar. That's very good, Mrs. Mannion. Very good indeed. Your Honor, please. The attorney for the people will reserve his comments for the argument. I will ask you this question, Mrs. Mannion. Was this the first time you had been in Barney Quill's car at night? Mrs. Mannion, did you hear the question? Yes, I heard. Yes, it was the first time. Would you raise your voice a little, Mrs. Mannion? I said it was the first time. Now, Mrs. Mannion, I'm quite concerned about the lost panties. Would you describe this article of clothing to the court? They were nylon and had lace up the sides. There was a label in them of the place I got them, the Smart Shop in Phoenix, Arizona. What was the color of the panties? I believe white. You believe? I have white and pink. They may have been pink. You're not sure. Haven't you checked your lingerie to see which uh, pair of panties is missing? No. When your husband came home late from his work, you had this little spat. Were you already dressed to go out? No. When did you dress? After dinner, when he was asleep. It's been stated here that you were bare-legged in the bar. Is that true? Yes. 
In your anger at your husband and your haste to get out of the trailer, perhaps you didn't put on any panties either. Objection. Witness has already testified what she was wearing. Sustained. Do you always wear panties, Mrs. Manion? No, Your Honor, I object to this line of questioning. Now, it's immaterial what Mrs. Manion does all the time. And the night she was attacked, she was wearing panties, and that's all we're concerned with. Your Honor, Mrs. Manion seems a little bit uncertain about what kind of panties she was wearing. And since these panties have not been found, I submit that it's possible she wasn't wearing any and, and has forgotten that. That's all I'm trying to get at. You may answer, Mrs. Mannion. You always wear panties? No. On what occasions don't you wear them? When you go out alone at night? No, no, no. Objection. He says he's going after one thing, then he goes after another. I'll sustain the objection. Strike out the last two questions in Mrs. Mannion's answer. Now, Mr. Dancer. Get off the panties. You've done enough damage. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Manion, is your husband a jealous man? He loves me. I'm sure of that, but is he excessively jealous? Your Honor, how can the witness answer that question? What's the norm of jealousy? Can you put your question a little differently, Mr. Dancer? Has your husband ever struck you in a jealous rage? No, no, Your Honor, I think Mr. Dancer's fishing now. What's the relevancy of this question? Your Honor, the shoe is squeezing Mr. Beagler's foot. In his own words, this is not a high school debate. This is a cross-examination in a murder trial. Proceed, Mr. Dancer. Mrs. Manning, did you ever go out socially in Thunder Bay? Yes, a few times. When your husband's outfit moved to Thunder Bay, didn't Barney Quill throw a cocktail party for the officers and their wives? Yes. Didn't your husband strike a young second lieutenant at this party? There was a little scuffle. It wasn't much. What was it about? I'm not sure I remember. Were you too drunk to remember? No, I was not. I, I, I think it was because of the lieutenant was cutting in too much when I was dancing with my husband. And shortly afterwards, on the veranda of the inn, didn't your husband slap you hard enough so that you fell against the wall? Well, he was drinking. Wasn't this a jealous rage? I don't know. You remember why he struck you? Well, yes. Wasn't he enraged at you because he thought you'd encourage this young lieutenant? He might have thought so. Mrs. Manion, there are witnesses to this whole affair. I'll ask you again, wasn't this a jealous rage? I guess you could call it that. Now I'll ask you. On the night of the shooting, what did you swear? What oath did you take on the rosary? It was about Barney Quill raping me. Why did you swear on the rosary that he raped you? For the reason that my husband said, because I was hysterical. That was the reason he gave for asking you to swear. What was your reason for swearing? So he'd believe me? Why shouldn't he believe you? Objection. The reason for the use of the rosary has been established. These questions are immaterial. No, I think I'll take the answer, Mr. Beagler. I will ask you again, Mrs. Mannion, why shouldn't he believe you? Because I wasn't making much sense. Did he think you'd lie about a thing like that? Objection, Your Honor. Lieutenant Mannion's already testified as what he thought. Sustained. Did your husband strike you that night? Did he hit you that night? Well, he... He, he may have slapped me because I was hysterical. And didn't you swear to a lie to keep him from hitting you again? No, no, I didn't, I did not. And hadn't he already beaten you up at the gate when he caught you coming home from a trip down Lover's Lane with Barney objection, Quill? Objection, objection. The witness has already testified she was beaten by Barney Quill. Quiet, quiet. No more questions. I think the witness had enough, Your Honor. Witness may step down. We'll recess for lunch.